Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my February favourites. A little bit vloggy and a little bit of the Anna Edit style where instead of just sitting on the end of the bed and talking about my products, I'm, I'm using them and just sort of showing you guys a bit more in real time. So I've just jumped out of the shower. I normally shower at night time, but when I need to wash my hair, I have a shower in the morning as well. I've been using a new shampoo in between using my purple shampoo that I've really been enjoying. I was finding that my hair was looking almost too ashy, too purple because the matrix purple shampoo that I use is really amazing it's quite strong so I decided to start using a different non purple shampoo in between and I picked one that I thought would be like really good quality for my hair not much of a hair expert so I don't know that much about hair products but this one has been in my experience working really well it's the Redken blonde idol so this is still meant to be designed for like blonde or bleached hair it's sulfate free which I really liked because my purple shampoo I don't believe is sulfate free so it can be a bit drying so it's nice to use something that's not quite as drying in between I just find it to be a very gentle shampoo that leaves my hair feeling really soft. As I say, I don't know much about hair product really, so I'm a bit like clueless as to what to tell you guys. I just think I'm really enjoying it, it's working well for my hair, it's not drying it out. My next favourite is actually the hair styling product that I've been using the last wee while. I purchased this and talked about it last month. It's the Way Ear Dry Foam, and I was recommended to try this from Alex from I Covet The. In her 2018 favourite, she talked about this as one of her favourite hair products for the year, and I thought, wow, if it's like in her yearly favourites, it must be good. I'm not someone that typically spends a lot of money on hair styling products. I normally just pick stuff up at Priceline. I usually just use like dry shampoo and hairspray, so I don't really feel like I need fancy ones. But this is kind of a specialist product, and I love air drying my hair if I can because it's so much better for it. I use straighteners occasionally, so to not have to use heat on them when I'm drying it as well is really helpful, especially with blonde bleached hair. So I've really, really been enjoying how this works. Take my hair out of my towel. I'll just give my hair a little brush through first. Now, obviously, I did use like conditioner stuff as well, and there'll be a few products that I use in my routine that I'm not talking about because I'm not doing my entire routine. I'm just talking through my favorite parts of it this month. And I do have to use quite a bit of product. I do find that's probably it's one criticism. I worry it's not going to last all that long and it's about 40 something dollars a bottle. I do about two to three pumps per application and do about two amounts through my hair. Really focusing it on the front where I tend to get a bit frizzy. So what this product is designed to do is sort of tame your natural waves. So if you've got like softly wavy hair, what it's designed to do is allow your hair to air dry in a styled way so it doesn't look crazy and frizzy. And it's just so much healthier for my hair to not have to use heat on it all the time. So especially in the summer, I've really been loving this. Maybe in the winter I'll use my hair dryer a bit more because it's not that pleasant to have to walk around for a couple of hours with wet hair in the cold. But I think definitely for a summer product, I'm 100% taking this on holiday with me. I leave in two days. Now in terms of my skincare routine, you guys know I'm doing skincare experiments this year. That seems to be something that's just kind of happened. Wasn't really planned initially. I have a video where I was using only drugstore skincare products. I'll try and remember to link that below for you. It's a very popular video anyway, so you've probably seen it. I've actually embarked on a new project for this month. So every month for like the next six months, I'm basically doing projects. I've written out a big list of ones I really want to do, but I can tell you that so far, I'm enjoying the routine that I'm using. Two or so weeks time, I'll give you a video updating you on what I've been using for the last few weeks. I will put in one product that actually isn't to do with the experiments. So it's not going to ruin the surprise of what it is. It's just a product that I stumbled across recently that I thought looked really great. It's by Aesop and it's their SPF 30 protective lip balm. In my last video, a lot of you were concerned that I wasn't using an SPF lip balm and I thought, true, I've never really considered having to have SPF in my lip products. So this one though, I thought looked really great because it's actually a zinc based lip balm, which is quite hard to find. A lot of SPF lip balms that I've found are chemical based. So I thought that this one was great. It does have essential oils in it. A lot of Aesop products do, so it's just something to be aware of. It's also got quite a nice sort of barrier effect to it. There's quite a lot of like oils and waxes in it. So especially in like winter, I think if you've got quite dry, chapped lips, you probably find that one to be really protective in the cold. Just popped on, just popped on my hourglass primer. It's always a favorite, guys. <laughs> For foundations, I've just been using mainly my Smashbox foundation a lot, the Makeup Revolution stick, and my Estelle Lula Double Wear Nude. So none of those are really new, but I wanted to talk about this. My new favorite sponge. So this is by Ella Cosmetics. A lot of you guys recommended I try this because you said it's very similar to the Flower Beauty sponge. And I do really love their large powder brush. It's one of my favorite brushes in my collection. And the lovely team at Ella actually sent these over to me. They sent over the pink ones and there's some mint green ones too if that's more your color. I think they do the same, although I haven't tried the mint ones yet. But these are like the Flower Beauty sponge. These are exactly the same texture. I'm so thrilled. It's really soft 
and bouncy like really fluffy feeling but I actually prefer the shape of this one to the Flower Beauty one too it's a much more traditional kind of beauty blender shape but with a flat edge and I just find it works so well so I'm just going to pop on my foundation using that I'm just using my Smashbox 0.3 talked about this foundation in my last favorites video it always looks a little bit yellow when it goes on the skin because it is perhaps a tiny bit on the warm side for me but they don't really have an undertone in the depth that I need that would work and it's actually fine once it's blended out especially if I'm just using like one one and a half pumps sort of thing just got one or two spots I'm just using my MAC concealer on. For under eye concealer though, something I've been loving is the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighter and Light. So this is not really like a super intense concealer, it's a very lightweight sort of concealer like the Touche Eclat by YSL. And the colour Light goes on looking quite bright, but it does actually oxidise a little bit, so just be aware if you've got skin that's any lighter than mine, I'm about NC10 at MAC for reference. You might find this to actually be a little bit dark once it actually oxidizes a bit. But I just love the texture of it. It's so lightweight and I find that I just don't really like the look of a heavy concealer under my eyes these days. I don't actually really love full coverage concealers under there. I prefer something that's just lightweight and glowy where it actually diffuses and reflects the light as opposed to trying to really cover. Another one that I find really great is the Too Faced Naturally Radiant Concealer. That's the original uh, liquid concealer they released. It's sort of a similar idea, similar soft medium coverage of glowy texture. For the most part this month I've actually been skipping powder. If I have been using powder I've been experimenting with the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder which is actually a really beautiful product. Especially because I'm using a lot of dewier products I want to kind of keep that and when I powder it just kind of takes it down and makes it look more makeup y. The Smashbox is a really unique formula too. As I said I talked about some of my last favourites videos so it's not really included in this but it's a long wearing hydrating formula so it really does look nice on the skin but it actually sticks around so I don't find I need powder and if I have a breakout that like the concealer moves around a bit on it I just top up my concealer throughout the day it's a lot easier to top up your makeup if you haven't powdered it because if it does shift you can literally just like shift it back that's just my preference at the moment but I wanted to highlight a couple of cheap products I've been really enjoying picked these up from Yes Style they were on a gift card and these are the 3CE Style Nanda blush cushions so I actually got a couple of colors one of them I haven't really had a chance to try yet so can't include that but this is the first color soft brown which is actually like a bronzer and I've been looking for something that is kind of similar to that L'Oreal one that's now been discontinued that I really liked <laughs> I've really been loving this so it does come with a puff and I've used it with the puff a couple of times it does work quite well with the puff but I find it a little bit easier just to use my beauty sponge I just dab the sponge literally right into the cushion and then just start to apply that onto the skin. These cushions have such a lovely sort of lightweight, almost like watercolour effect. They're pigmented but they're very liquidy so they're easy to blend. And then the blush colour I've been loving is just called pink and it's just what it says, it's a pink blush. Quite sheer on the skin, I have been using the puff to apply the blush. It's very lightweight, like it's so subtle. Can't make a mistake with this colour because even when you apply it like quite liberally it just shows up as such a sheer wash. So it's fantastic if you're a bit scared of blush or you have a very fair complexion like me. Now would you believe it? I've been skipping highlighter guys. I just don't really need it when I'm not powdering my face and then I'm using cream products. I don't need it, like my skin looks highlighted and dewy already. So I've just put on my MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint and Taupe and my Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. And for my eyes I just put a bit of NARS Kingston all over the lid and into my crease and just a little bit of Zoeva Brown Eyeliner just to define my lash line. But I wanted to talk about a mascara that I've been using a lot over the last couple of weeks. It is by Flower Beauty and it's their Lash Warrior Mascara and this is in the shade Fierce Brown. Now, the actual formula of this and that and the brush, I'm not like over the moon about, it's perfectly fine. The reason I wanted to kind of highlight it and talk about it is it's more just the fact that it's a brown mascara. And I've been looking for a good brown mascara at the drugstore for a long time. And I tell you what, my local price line literally has no brown mascaras. Like I was looking through and I was like, all of these are black, 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 black is black, intense black. Like uh, how many shades of black do we need? And there was not one single shade of brown. And I think brown mascara can look so nice for like a natural day-to-day -day look as I'm doing here. So when Flower Beauty released here in Australia, 
I bought two of their brown mascaras. I bought one that's like a blackest brown and then this was like a true brown. And I've just been loving it for day to day. I just think it looks so nice. <laughs> the sun's about to come through. Um, I just think it looks so nice and natural and soft on my very fair complexion, with my lighter features. When I've got so little makeup on, like eye makeup, I find that a black mascara can sometimes look a bit like, whoa. Whereas this just blends in with my tones a lot nicer. I'll just pop on some gloss. Three guesses to what it is. I honestly do think this might have taken over the place as my favourite nude look. What is life? I'm not wearing highlighter and I'm not using MAC Blankety. Before I get underway with a few lifestyle favourites, I just wanted to mention a fail. And it's kind of just a product update because I really wanted to like let you guys know my thoughts on a new product that I got in PR. It's the Naked Reloaded Palette. Now, I think the packaging on this is so beautiful. It's like a satin fabric. It's really pretty, it's nice and thin. However, the shades in this, for me, are just so not my cup of tea. They are a little bit too warm for a neutral palette for my complexion. There is also a quality issue that I want to talk about. I'm just having a real issue with the shimmers. So like this shade here really cool to me. This was the one that I was like, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. It's called Dream Weaver. I was expecting that to be the most beautiful, shimmery kind of taupe shade. But it is the crumbliest, driest shadow I've ever used in my life. I'll try and include like a swatch or something because I took one for a friend the other day. I was like, don't buy this palette. I don't like it. Yeah, I just think that the quality of Urban Decay shadows has really gone down. Like I love their Naked 2 palette and I hope that the formula hasn't changed on that over the years because I bought mine like five years ago. But I love the quality of those shadows and I think they had such good stuff back in the day. And I think it was a big mistake to discontinue the original Naked palette and pop this in. I just don't find this to be a very good quality. I think they're far superior warm neutral palettes on the market if that's your cup of tea, a warm neutral palette. There's so many, the market is saturated. So I don't think this is worth picking up at all, really. Unless you are a naked palette collector and you just want it, you know, to complete the set, I can totally understand that. So I'm probably not gonna hold on to this. I don't even think I really want to like try and do tutorials with it, guys. I just it's not my cup of tea, there are so many other amazing palettes. They have come my way recently, in fact, one of them is this palette. I just haven't used it enough to really rave about it as a favourite. Who knows, it might be in next month. So this is an example of a warm palette that I just prefer. This is the NARS Skin Deep palette. And while it has some warmer tones, you know, I haven't actually even used this one yet. Um, it still has an overall just very soft, neutral undertone to it in general. And I'm excited to keep trying it because I'm really enjoying it so far. And as you guys know, I really love the NARS singles. Those are my beauty favourites. But I wanted to chat uh, just about a few lifestyle things before we wrap this video up. Because I always enjoy including this sort of stuff in my favourites videos anyway. So I really wanted to talk about a couple of shows that I've really been enjoying on Netflix. Since Alex has gone to Perth, I have found that I've had a lot more time Time, so I've been really productive like getting stuff done but I've also had a lot more like downtime by myself and so instead of like spending time with him eating with him <laughs> and like going on dates and stuff like I've just been watching a lot more like Netflix and stuff at home in the evenings some of the shows that I've really enjoyed this month were sex education you've probably heard a few people talk about that it's a really weird show I love the setting of it it's in England but it's set up like an American style kind of high school and but then it's got this really like vintage kind of vibe to it as well and you at first you're like is this set in the 80s and the 60s like what's happening here but then they've got smartphones so it's very weird but I think it's really good TV if you're in Australia and New Zealand I believe it's in New Zealand as well but in our Netflix is slightly different to the American Netflix and I don't think you'd have the show over there but it's called stay here it's a competition show here in australia for instant hotels so like people that have airbnbs that they actually literally transform their like their home into an airbnb it's like a competition kind of thing but like oh my gosh it's really hilarious there are like some people on there that are so despicable some of them just seem like awful people um but i can kind of tell that they're sort of like putting on a bit of an act for the cameras and stuff like you can tell it's definitely a little bit well I would hope it's inflated for the cameras because some like some of them are just awful but very entertaining I also just really love like obviously interior design and stuff like it's one of my favorite things to talk about on my channel and there's, you get to see a lot of really unique points of view in terms of design and style so it kind of like ticks all the boxes for me and then another show that I really wanted to talk about was one that's a little bit more triggering so it is about eating disorders and it's called addicted to food it's on Netflix and it follows eight people that have an addiction to food that are in treatment, in a treatment center. And these eight contestants are not all the same. Like some of them are compulsive overeaters, some of them are anorexics, some of them are bulimic. But they put all of these people together because they believe that like the root of their problem all stems from the same kind of source. 
Uh, it's just expressed differently in a different disorder. So it was a lot more of an emotional roller coaster ride than I expected. Like I cried nearly every episode, especially from about episode three on. I got really invested in like the progress of the people in the show. I just loved how they focus so much on like the emotional side of the therapy. It resonates a lot with how I like to kind of view mental illness and stuff as well and you know that it's actually in a, some regards more like an emotional illness i just thought it was really fascinating seeing like their approach to treatment i think it goes beyond just food addiction i think anyone with any sort of addiction to anything drugs alcohol sex addiction like any addiction even shopping hoarding all of these addictions stem ultimately down to like some sort of emotional imbalance in our bodies and so for me i thought it was actually really applicable to many many people also i want to talk about my favorite plant it is this guy my giant fiddle leaf fig he's so beautiful i took some footage this morning when i woke up because the sun was coming in he does get a little bit of sun in the morning which you know usually you get told don't give them any direct sunlight they don't actually mind a bit of direct sunlight as long as it's only for like either the very 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 early morning or the very very late afternoon absolutely thrilled with them it was a very big purchase and as much as alex was supportive like he thought it was gorgeous and that he was like i oh, know no more plants but anyway i think i should probably wrap it up because i think my beauty portion took up quite a lot of the video as well but i just wanted to throw in those few extra like lifestyle extra pieces next month i'll try and do fashion as well i just today's been a bit of a mess i'm handing in my phd tomorrow it's crazy which i would have included as like a favorite of the month but it's actually march the first tomorrow so i'm filming this on the 28th and today my brain has just been an absolute blur i didn't really get a very good sleep i'm in this really weird state where i'm like happy one moment like so excited and then i'm feeling really anxious the next and i think my anxiety is stemming from the fact that like this is it i have to hand it in and i have no more control over it once i submit it so i'm actually feeling very 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 mixed emotions and pfft, like that's why my declutter took so long to even just like get all the products out and organize everything and then film it and I was like I wanted to do all my base products today and I only got through foundations and but I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless my next video is of course my week next weekly vlog and until then I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days and I'll see you soon in all hora I'm leaving I really gotta go so see you see you later it's time for us to end see you see you later I'll be back again any Kiwis recognize that Susie Kato for the win